Hello and welcome to Radio Blog 14. Um, now today has got a lot of shout outs. Load. Probably more than was that in the shout out blog. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get to it because, you know, millions of people are asking and I'm decided to get it done. This is because I'm not going to be doing them next week. Um, I've found they eat up a lot of blog time. Therefore, no, I'm going to, I'm not going to do any next week. So, you know, here, here they all are. I'm sorry if I have missed you out. But yeah, anyway, I'll get to it. David, David is so cool, like is his channel, and he runs the um, blog, the Doctor Who blog, The Time War. I'm not sure if it's still open, it was closed, but I think that was just temporary. Um, so yeah, hello. Um, Tom, now Doc Thomas Versi, Doc Martha 9000 was his last account, but I think he's got a new one, which I'm not sure. Sorry. Um, Isaac, hello Isaac. Tom, Tom, another Tom, Tom Productions Go. Hello Tom. Yaz, hello Yaz. Lewis. Hello Lewis, how are you? Matt. Hello Matt. You know Matt of course. Elsie Wellsy. Elliot Well Elliot Well Elliot. <laughs> Elliot Wellsy Burford the I can't do it. Elliot, hello. Sammy. Hello Sammy. Lee. Um hello Lee. Who Lee, who is actually back um with Vortex Guy for this month only, so hello Lee. John Anime. John Gransden. Hello Anime. Um John Swale, Scary Wood. How are you? Um Mega Shorts. Hello. Simon Craig, hello. He's oh no, no mind. That's a secret that for my Doctor Who series. Hello, Simon. Um, Simon Titus Caesar, writer of the Heralds. That, that's your brand name now. <laughs> hello, Simon. Um, Katie. Katie is awesomeness. Is it awesome? Yeah. Hello, Dale Y. Hello, Dale. Ryan Hennessy, Sugar Daddy ninety one. Hello, Ryan. John Hutch, Tony Coburn, Tom Reese K. Hello, Hannah Wollaston, Seb, Sebastian Burden, Matt Chambers. Hello, um, Joe, Doctor Whovian13, hello, Osama, hello, Jack, Tardis Traveller13, hello, Tristan Palmer, hello. Um, anyone from school that watches, Bobby, you know, Bob, Bob Blin. then there's, um, Jack, Hula Hoop 34 hello, Mitch, Oily Guy 12345 Chris, Lord Layton, Carter, 3600, 36,000, I could just say, I don't know, Brandon, Daz Deficious, and Emma, Echno Music, and people without YouTube channels, Danny Smith, hello, Josh Thomas, and Michael Locke. Okay, that's it. Sorry if I have missed you. Anyway, now I'm going to get on to the um, film review section of Radio Blog. So yeah, do you like my um, new title in the background? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, today I'm going to be reviewing um, City of Ember. Now, um, I went to see this on my birthday for my party. It, and um with Bobby and some other friends um and it's a really good film um yeah it's a I think it's a PG uh, per personally some scenes I thought should should have made it into a 12A really it was, but yeah it was a PG it was really good um when I saw the advert a bit of the advert anyway I saw them on this um log flume kind of thing sorry I I might be spoiling bits of this you know turn off now if I if you don't if you don't want to be spoiled Anyway, um, you're in. They're in this kind of log flume kind of thing. It's a locker, and they're going down this um, well, log flume basically. And I saw that on the advert, and it was like, oh yeah. And if you if you've ever seen Journey to the Center of the Earth, where they're on the mine car, um, like that, it's kind of exactly the same. And I thought, great, it's going to be a cheap, a cheap budgetish, um, 3D film. But then I saw another trailer with a lot more stuff about all the human race being saved and all that. And I thought, oh yeah, it might be quite good. So I went, and yeah, it was. The acting's quite good, and the boy isn't as great as the girl. But anyway, um, yeah, Bill Murray's in it, and Tim Robbins. Um, Bill Murray's from Groundhog Day and things like that. Tim Robbins, The Shawshank Redemption. And um, yeah, them two, them two are quite good in it. Bill Murray's the villain, and... Um, Tim Robbins is the main character boy's dad. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the acting's good, the script's good, and the story's really good. It's more, it's very interesting, very different from anything that's ever been done before. And um, so yeah, if you get to see that, I would. It's um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's at the cinema. I should think it would be. Um, yeah. So City of Ember, I'd give um. <coughs> Eight, high eight, nearly nine out of ten. No, maybe not nine. I don't know. High eight. Yeah, there you go. 
Yeah, I'm not very good at reviewing films, am I? <laughs> anyway, now I'm going to move on to the Heralds. And a change from the previous weeks, it's, a, it's quite a big chunk today. So, yeah, enjoy. All I could hear were the undertones of a hugely strained voice desperately trying to raise attention. Totally forgetting what I had in front of me in a primordial human instinct of altruism, I launched myself into that room without further thought. A pungent scent of musk mingled with sulphur and incense permitted the dark room. In the middle was only a medium-sized table with four lighted black candles on it. On that table, tied in ropes, lay the author of those subdued cries that I'd heard a few seconds ago. To my horror, it was Mr. Thomas. His head was turning side to side in agony, repeating, entreating with his eyes closed. One phrase only, like some sort of mantra. Help! Help! For God's sake, help! I was then aware that all around me a muffled sort of chant was taking place. Voices, unseen voices of children, in plaintive dirge, with the intermittence of the ringing of a bell, were filling the room in a highly charged atmosphere. It was so stuffy and heavy, blood was slowly running down the legs of the table as Mr. Thomas was getting more agitated. A drop reached the top of my right shoe. I moved it at once. From where I was, he could not yet see me, as he was facing the wall at the opposite end of the room, but obviously knew someone was there with him. However, I was deep in shock and seemed unable to think or react and felt frustrated and guilty. More candles were mysteriously lit on all sides of the room by an unseen agent. It was then I noticed the cause of Mr. Thomas's distress. Huge needles covered all his body, attaching him to the wooden table. The voices were becoming more and more distinct and the towering figure of the boy suddenly materialised before me with a wide, evil smile. Mr. Thomas jostled in fright. That very moment caused him even more pain as the impact of the needles seemed to enter his body, further giving way to a terrible shriek of agony. The rhythm of the voices was gaining momentum, encircling me more tightly. As I was feeling increasingly fainter, I will always remember that feeling of overwhelming hopelessness at the awful knowledge that a more powerful force was taking charge of me, and that I was giving way slowly, letting go until all my senses were utterly wrapped and emerged in that diabolical ceremony. The last thing I remember before I lost consciousness was hearing a definite click from somewhere, and an impression of walls and spaces moving. Then there was silence. It was later revealed to me by a matron that I had been in a deep state of unconsciousness for over two weeks, regularly running with extremely high temperatures and often delirious. She also mentioned that whilst unconscious I was constantly uttering words. That's odd, matron. What was I saying? No, no, my child. It wasn't so much what you were saying, it was the voice. It wasn't your voice, you see. When, he when Headmaster heard it, he called the local vicar at once. Got this whole room exercised. What? He did what? You see, apparently that voice had been heard other times. How can I explain it? It's the grounds at night, coming from the main school building, amid other unseen children's voices and a resounding bell, so he told me. The disturbing thing was hearing it from you, poor, poor child. I heard it myself with my own ears. She swiftly dried her eyes breathed deeply and gave me a kiss. You know, I've only been here three months, so I don't know much of the mm, history of the place. You should have seen the expression on Headmaster's face. That's of total fear. Can you imagine that? He, afraid. I must have looked terrified because she suddenly changed subject. Well, enough with that. How are you feeling now? Well, better, apart from an annoying headache, but... The door opened and Headmaster entered. Good to see you looking well again, child. We've all been very worried about you. He spoke with his usual deep voice, cultured, sonorous, but with a hint of strain and tremor. He looked at me deeply, as if waiting for me to ask some. There were indeed so many things to ask that a hundred questions were competing, buzzing in my mind to take precedence. Finally, I just managed to stammer incoherently. Who on earth was that boy? Poor Mr. Thomas. I burst into tears, but it was reassuring to have both of them there. I felt safe, protected. Once I collected myself, Headmaster said, It was a boy from the school, more than 100 years ago. When I became Headmaster, some 10 years ago, I found out all the information about him and the Heralds in the school history. The Heralds, sir? Anyway, yeah, bit of a rubbish ending there. Anyway, I'm talking fast now because I'm about to run out of time. Um, have a good bonfire night and see you next week. Bye!